turn on the lights. Okay, so good, so good. Oh, his presence, it's hard to come out of that. Sometimes we can just feel him so heavy. I don't know, like sometimes he, you feel like it's kind of dry and even though he's there and then sometimes he's, you know, there and you just really feel weighty. Oh, and you, it's hard to move on. Jesus, you're so good. Love you, my goodness. We're going to continue talking about demons tonight. We're, I didn't get to finish it last week because there's just so much. There is so much. There's so much about this enemy that we have to know. And I'm really still only scratching the surface. We could probably do weeks of series, series on this. And I talk about this. Well, we, probably, we may pick it up the first of the year. It's such a, I'll, I'll, I'll weave it into some of the scripture or, or some of the messages. Because if we, if we forget who our enemy is, we end up being bogged down by things in this world that are not important. And they're really coming from assignments from the kingdom of darkness. And I stressed, I, I did a live earlier today because this is why it's so important to me. Because what is coming, and we're going to talk more about this next Friday and through the first of the year. I need to be with the Lord a little bit to get kind of the details about what we're facing. Um, to deliver a message more about that. But really, if we're bogged down with distractions and we feed into the assignments, these dark, dirty dog devils, I call them, these demons have on us, we get distracted and we're not ready for what's coming. And I'm telling you what's coming. Guys, the Lord is returning. I don't, I'll say that every single time I take the mic, he's coming. And every single word that was scripted down in Revelation is true. And there is a generation that will experience it 100%. We are not destined for wrath, but judgment is coming. And the judgment falls on the just and unjust. That's how it rolls. But the ones who are are in Christ, in the secret place of the Most High. Psalms 91, we're in that cocoon of protection, those apostolic hubs of protection. We're going to be wonderful. We're going to be in joy, no matter what we face. There's, you know, the things that the Lord has taught me over the years is to be happy and at rest with any situation that I'm in. And he's really done it just with me preaching in the pulpit. I mean, sometimes... You know, he's taken me from being able to deliver words in front of thousands just online to sometimes just one to sometimes maybe a handful to back to a hundred. And the Lord really tests us in these ways. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to take it back. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to rip it away. I'm going to give you a lot. I'm going to give you a little. And when we can stay consistent all the way through all of our tests all the time and never ask why, Never wonder, Lord, when is it going to end? When is the testing going to end? When am I going to get more? When we, when we learn to be at rest, these devils don't bother us. Hi, Ken. How are you? So we need to learn how to be in rest. Okay, so we can be in rest when we know who our enemy is and we know exactly how to defeat him and what he's doing. It's nothing scary. If you don't know your enemy, if you, if you, if you do know your enemy, if you don't know your enemy, it's scary because you don't know who's coming at you. You don't know if you feel unprepared. You don't, you don't have a weapon. You can't defend yourself. That's when it's scary. And we end up doing things in panic and we end up making decisions and feelings. And we end up doing things that are more detrimental to our lives than it is benefiting our lives because we don't know what's coming at us because we talked about it last week. They're invisible. We can't see it. We cannot see the kingdom of darkness. It's invisible. So we talked about last week, just recapping before we continue, what is a demon is what I want to talk about tonight. We talked about principalities. Ephesians 6 tells us that we war with things that we cannot see, an invisible realm that we cannot see. I've done many sermons talking about the two kingdoms that we serve that we cannot see. It is the kingdom of God and it's the kingdom of darkness. And depending which one you yield to depends on which one has authority over you. You begin to obey one or the other, then you obey God. The kingdom of God has authority over you and your life is just this. It's, it's in the kingdom of light. You start sinning and start obeying the kingdom of darkness. Well, then the kingdom of darkness has authority over you and your life is a hot mess, right? So we talked about the principalities. We talk about demonic ranking. We talked about how it goes from the fallen angels. Lucifer himself has, let's just say, honey, how does it go in the military? General, colonel, all the way down. 
we were talked about this last week. You got your officers, officers, you your soldiers. soldiers. I mean, it just depends. Like, what do you? How do? high does it go up to the general, and then you obviously yeah. have? I mean, you got the president of the United States. You got a non-commissioned officer, which can go to the command sergeant major. Yeah. Of the army. Yeah. That's the highest ranking you could have for the army. And yeah. Then you have a general. General. Star general. And everything underneath there, you have all of these different leadership positions. And it breaks down. Breaks down. That's how the kingdom of darkness is. That's how it is. It's structured. Not a lot of people think that Lucifer has this structured kingdom. He absolutely does. It is a very well organized. It's a very well oiled machine. He's been doing this for thousands of years. It is an organized system all the way down to the lowest ranking devil. And the lowest ranking devils are attached to you and I. Now, they cannot be on the inside of us. We cannot be possessed with a devil. We talked about that last week. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, he lives within you. We looked at scriptures last week that tell us that Jesus, he possesses us. He possesses this vessel. Once you let him know that, I accept what you did on Calvary, Lord. I accept it. Come inhabit me as your vessel. Come and use me. Come and be with me. Come live inside of me. I am in you and you are in me, right? But if, you, if Jesus is not... In you, you can be possessed. Do demons need a body. Fallen angels don't need a body. These are two different species, two different ones. You have disembodied spirits, which are demons, and then you have the fallen angels, which are angels that have fallen. So these are principalities, Lucifer, principalities, the fallen angels, and it goes all the way down from strength. The demonic realm is ranked by strength. The weakest demons are the lowest rank. Forever, 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 amen. It doesn't matter how many assignments that they fulfill per their, uh, uh, is it called subordinates, honey? Above them, they will always, it's like the caste system in India. You're never getting out of your rank. So the lowest devils also are not per Howard Pittman. No, this was a, a Southern Baptist pastor. If y'all haven't seen any of his videos, I really highly recommend y'all do. He died in like 1970-something, and he was a Southern Baptist preacher, so he didn't really, you know, know about the supernatural realm, speaking in tongues. He loved the Lord, but very, very traditional. He saw how this kingdom worked. His story, first account story of dying and seeing how the kingdom of darkness works and Lucifer's organization matches Countless other near-death experiences where the Lord brought them back to tell his people, look, this is what you're dealing with. He was saying that the lower-ranking devils, is the weaker they are, the lower they are, assigned to human beings, familiar spirits, Other, the higher-ranking ones detest them. They don't talk to them. They're isolated. It's just a demonic, creepy nasty, insane kingdom. You're never going to figure it out. It's like a mad hatter situation. You start going down this aisle. It's like, who saw that movie when we were kids, like The Labyrinth? Y'all remember that? Where they were in that maze and they just kept going round and, and nothing made sense and it was insanity. That's the kingdom of darkness. The Lord is giving us some ideas of how it functions, but it's insane. So you're never going to figure it out, which is why they cause us to be insane when we listen to their lies, because they're insane. They don't make any sense and they're out to kill you and they hate us. We talked about that last week. All right. So what is a demon? Let's start there. What is a demon? Well, specifically demons, like I just said, they're not fallen angels. They're not the fallen angels. They're disembodied spirits. So a demon is a person, a.k.a. a personality. Each one of us has our own personality. We are body, we are soul, we are spirit. All right? You remove our spirit like me, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're three in one just like the Father is three in one. And I've explained this. I'll do it again tonight so we understand we are three in one. So if you take my spirit out of me, you take my soul out of me, you take this flesh, this earth suit that I'm in out of me, you've got three of me. Now, just because I'm out of my flesh suit and I'm in my spirit doesn't make me any less Lauren. I'm still Lauren. I'm just out of my earth suit. 
if you take me out and just put me in my soul, that's my personality. I'm still Lauren. I'm just my emotions and my soul. You put me in my flesh. Well, yes, I'm Lauren. You can see me. This is what I look like in this form. But if you spread me out, I'm still the same person. I'm just, I'm just in one vessel right now. It's like, the, it's like God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is God as Jesus. He is God as the Holy Spirit. He is God as the Father. They're three in one. Just like you're three in one, I'm three in one. We're the same person. Demons, the Bible doesn't say very much about where they came from, but we do get some clues. And there's two popular theories per scripture. Theory number one, all right, is they're the spirits of the hybrid Nephilim. So when the Lord flooded the earth, Noah, right, Genesis 6 tells us that the watchers, these angelic beings, came down. It's in your Bible. If you haven't read it online, it's in there. It's a great... You want to read a good sci-fi novel? Read your Bible. It's a great sci-fi. It's awesome, but it's true. It's not fiction. The watchers came down and had sex with the women. That's just what happened. And then they had hybrid children. They were half human and they were half angelic. They turned out to be very evil and corrupted giants looking all kind of ways. Some were 20 feet tall, you know, some probably eight to nine feet tall. We know that the king of Og, his bed, I think, was 16 feet and I think like nine feet wide, right? Goliath, massive, massive structure he had. The Bible gives us these dimensions. So some of the theory is demons came from their disembodied spirits. So at one time they had bodies. So the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim that were not human, we are human, they were not human, right? They have been earthbound since that time. Another theory is, is pre edemic souls that were not human that went and fell with the rebellion of Lucifer before Adam was created. That is another theory. Um, a lot of that is backed up in scripture. The Lord doesn't tell us very much, maybe because it's not a salvation issue and maybe because he knew we would fight over it. <laughs> but nonetheless, these are the two strongest theories and the Bible is just strictly tells us they're just here. Deal with them. All right. So we're going to deal with them. What up, Jack? Hey, how are you? So when we deal with these personalities, we'll deal with the fallen angels here in a little bit. But we have these disembodied spirits that we can't see. They're like, they're parasites. So they have, they have to have hosts to be able to do anything on this planet. They have to have bodies, whether it be human bodies or whether it be animal bodies. We know that they can inhabit animal bodies because we see it in the pigs. When the Lord came to the tombs and they, he had that man that was possessed with legions of devils, the devils were like, don't send us to hell before our time. Where did they want to go? They wanted to stay here on the earth. They're earthbound. So what did they ask Jesus to do? They asked him to go into the pigs. Why? Because they need bodies. So if you're a spirit floating around, you can't manipulate anything. You can't touch things in this realm. You can touch things in the realm that, that you're from, right? That's why the Lord... Oh, I'm getting off on a tangent. That's why the Lord came in the flesh, because God is spirit. He couldn't hug you. He couldn't touch you. He couldn't kiss you. He couldn't redeem you. He had to come and be in the flesh, right? So he decided to come in his created flesh. Man, demons want a body because without a body, they cannot operate on this planet. So they try to inhabit people that do not have the Holy Spirit living inside of them, which is Christ. They try to inhabit animals, which is why you see animals that are rabid, right? Or just crazy. There's nothing you can do but put them down. They're demonized. All right? We see this in the Bible. A familiar spirit is a spirit that follows a family. And guess what? There is a familiar spirit that's assigned to every person on this planet. From the king of darkness. Like I told you from the beginning, like we learned last week, this kingdom is very organized. And they are creepers. They are creepy. They watch everything that you do. They're the creepiest things. They watch when you sleep. They watch when you eat. They watch when you go to the bathroom. They watch when you shower. 
They watch when you talk to people. They watch your intimate moments. They watch your family. They've watched your mom. They've watched your dad. They've watched your sisters, your siblings, all of these things. They know you better than your spouse knows you. They know you better than your mama knows you. They know better than your daddy knows you. They know your mama, your family, all the way down your ancestry line. Why? Because they've been here since the beginning of time. And they watch you. They watch these familiar spirits are assigned to families. Which is why a daddy can be an alcoholic. And then soon you got a son that's an alcoholic. Then you got a daughter that's an alcoholic or in drug dealing. Or whatever. Prostitution. Or sexual sins. They go after what sins affected a family member. And genetically they'll push that on the other person coming on down the line. Why? Because it's an assignment to keep you from following Christ. This, this is calculated. So we cannot get sideways and off of our assignment about what's coming in 24 or 25 because we've got devils following us and we don't know why we're acting this way or why someone's acting a way towards us or why we're feeling this way towards somebody. Why we just feel angry and we erupt. It's not you. It's the person that's following you that you can't see. It's a person, a personality. A person is a personality. Okay? person is a personality. You just happen to have earth suits. You actually, you just have flesh. You can see, we can see each other because we have flesh. Personalities. They follow you. We have to be careful. They have these few assignments. So this is why I want you to be careful. These are their assignments. Let's recap them from last week. I gave you more, but we're just going to go over three tonight. So we can move on. Because I want to get very specific at what these things do. And I don't want you to ever, ever forget, never forget, every single time you're dealing with a person, every single time you're dealing with an issue, every time 100% you're dealing with a spiritual realm with that issue. Just get carnal thinking off of your mind forever and ever and ever and ever. The more carnally out of your mind you can get, the more successful you're going to be here on this planet and the more successful you're going to be in the will of God on your life. Think spirit always. They have a few assignments. Number one assignment is to torment, torture, torture, and eventually kill you. That's the assignment. The goal is death. But if they can't kill you because you belong to God, they have no authority to kill you. Because remember what I said last week. If you're not of God's, if you're not God's, you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're not saved, I should say. Lucifer can do whatever he wants to you. You're fair game. You actually belong to him because you belong to this planet, which belongs to him. So you're fair game. So he can use you however he wants to use you in whatever sense. He can give you the world and kill you in a car accident when he's done with you. Get you murdered when he's done with you. It don't matter. You have no protection. But if you're a believer, they can't kill you, but they can use other people to kill you. They can harass you to death until you absolutely wear yourself out. They can tell so many lies to you that you become so depressed they're suicidal. You can kill yourself, right? So they will harass and harass and harass and harass you until you absolutely accomplish nothing in your life. And then before you know it, you're 95 years old, you've accomplished nothing, and you die. Number two. They keep you from knowing Jesus. That's another assignment of theirs. If you're caught up with the cares of this world and you never think about Christ, they've done their job. Christian or non-Christian. Number three. They keep you from serving him, Jesus, and they keep you from your assignment, which I just said. Their favorite tactic on every one of us you know how they call that torture, like Chinese torture or something? Like, they do the, the, the craziest things that torment people forever. Like, you know, like the, the water droplets on your head for hours? Like, I think that was one of the Chinese torture things. You know, multiple cuts all over your body until you just die type of torture. Some of the Chinese torture techniques. They're subtle. But when they happen to you over and 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 over again, you finally just want to die. So the demons will come along 
and they'll harass you. They call it waterboarding. They'll try to drown, drown, drown you, drown you. Cares of this world, cares of this world, depression, money problems, no time, can't get ahead, can't get up for air, can't catch a break, over and over and over. And they'll do this all of your life. And you will never detect them because they're subtle. And while you're busy blaming other people for doing it to you, while you're getting mad at God, don't you see me? I'm going through all these things. I put out one fire, then another fire starts. I got another fire back here. I can't get ahead. And the person that doesn't even know you is living their best life. What is it? They want you to do these things. That's their tactic. These little devils, as low ranking as they are, have the assignment to wear you down. Wear you down. In your mind, in your job, by other people, by life circumstances. If they can wear you down, if they can drown you to death with the cares of this world, they've done their job. They don't even have to kill you. You've killed yourself by listening to these devils who all they have to do is just do the bare minimum and you believe it in your whole life that the Lord has died to give you abundance has been stolen from you because you didn't know the enemy. It's their favorite thing. Some live with this, these persons, these personalities all over them for all of their life. Because they don't know. They pop depression pills. They pop anxiety meds. They do all the things that the hospitals and doctors tell them to do because they can't take it anymore. And guess what? You start popping pills, you start becoming lethargic. You start not, you just be, you're numb. You don't have any feelings. We talked about this earlier. You don't have any feelings. You, you're not happy or sad. You're just, you just exist. Because it's way better just to exist than to feel at all. And then when you don't feel at all, how are you going to do the Lord's work? You can't feel for a person. You can't feel sad or compassionate when you've got a lame person in front of you. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well, that's not me. You don't cry. You know, things don't hurt you. The Lord had to deliver that in me at one point in my life. I had so much rejection and so much torment in my life that I just got to a point that I didn't feel anymore. I didn't care if I got hurt because you can't hurt me. I grew really thick skin. That's not of God. It's not. Devils do that to you. And that's where they want you to get. You can't fulfill your God-called purpose when you're walking around like a shell. You can't feel people. You can't love people. You can't be generous. There's no point in living if it's like that. That's what they want you to feel. It's sad because Joel 2.32, if you knew the word, this is why it's so important. I say, the Bible is your gold mine. You start digging into the gold mine, you find gold. But you got to dig. You dig the gold mine to find the gold nuggets. And then when you find the gold nuggets, what do you got to do? You got to refine them. It's a process. But if you read your word and you dig for the gold nuggets, you would have read Joel 2, 2 that tells you whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. You're set free from this garbage. You don't have to listen to it because it's lies. They're lies. If the Lord could show you the realm that's harassing you, you would not feel the way that you do because you wouldn't put up with it. You wouldn't put up with someone talking to you like that in the flesh. You'd probably punch them. Right? The same with the demonic realm. If you could just see what you're dealing with, you would be furious. This is why the Lord says everything's spirit and I want you to fight in the spirit. Put on the full armor of God. Helmet, breastplate. Get your sword out, which is the word of God. 
If I ever start feeling those things, those lies, I, I've gotten really used to knowing when the devils are around. By the way, they'll never go away. They're earthbound. They're always here. And so the Lord returns, we're stuck with them. But they don't have to get so close to you where you can feel them breathing on your neck. No, that's trespassing in my life. They have to be within a hundred feet of my perimeter and my children and my husband and my cars every day. You're not coming anywhere near my family. Because I know right here, Joel 2.32 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. That's me. I'm delivered. Carnal mind versus the spirit. You got to know which one. The Bible tells us that the flesh, the mind wants to go this way. The spirit wants to go this way. They can't coexist in the same place. You can't let your flesh and your carnal mind pull you this way. Because you're just pulling yourself into the demonic realm that has full access to you. That is going to chain you down. You start moving into the spirit, you'll be able to catch this stuff. You'll, you'll be able to catch when you start feeling irritated and agitated and angry. Because those kind of feelings are not of God. So you start, so you start thinking to yourself, wait a second, there's a spirit of anger that's been following me around, a spirit of agitation that's been following me around to the point where I just exploded on my kids and they didn't even do anything wrong. That's not God. That certainly wasn't me. I love my kids. I love my husband. I love people. Where did that come from? A spirit of anger followed me around till I exploded. You got to know in the spirit. You have to be able to identify the things that fly into your head or maybe your habits. You're going to have to start identifying, is this me? Because if it's me, then it's just discipline. I got to discipline myself. Or is it spirit? Okay, well, if it's spirit, you got two options. The spirit of God, is that talking to me? Or is the spirit of darkness a devil talking to me? You're going to have to know the difference. And the only way to know the difference is to know the characteristics of God. All right, so who knows the characteristics of God? Just going to put you guys on the spot. Anybody want to volunteer? Characteristics of God. Just give me a few. Yes, not. Love. Okay, love. Joy. Joy. Peace. Peace. Meekness. Meekness. Faithfulness. 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 Patience. Sound mind. Sound mind. Long-suffering. These are wonderful characteristics. Nothing of the devil feels that way. If you are feeling any other way than those fruits of the spirit, it is not of God. And it's not you. Why do I know it's not you? Because you were created in his image. You don't think that way. You only think that way because you're in a fallen world with fallen critters all around you. So when you start feeling angry, agitated, for some reason, someone's really getting on your nerves and like you don't want to be around them, but you don't have a problem being around them any other day. That's not you and it's not them. Right? It's a spirit. You start feeling depressed. You don't have any joy. You can't laugh anymore. You don't feel love or compassion for someone. You're just, uh, you're numb. Right? You have, you've got a critical spirit. These things are of the kingdom of darkness. They're devils. Okay. Let me move on and let me tell you what their activities are. Their activities are they entice. Just go ahead and do it. Nobody's going to know. Just do that. Go ahead and do whatever. It's like, you know, nobody's going to see it. They entice. They harass until you explode. Just like I said. They'll spirit of anger will follow and follow and follow and follow and follow you and everything will start making you angry this little spirit of just anger until you explode on somebody and then, and then you go oh my gosh why did I do that I have so much guilt oh my gosh like I am a child of God like I am an ambassador like everyone's watching me and I just exploded where did that come from you know where it came from it came from a devil that's been following around all day and maybe it's been following you around all day because you didn't start your day off reading your word. You didn't clean your mind before you started your day. So that little critter came, saw a, a hole where you were not had your armor on and got right in. 
harassed you all day long. Mm. Number three, they torment mind, emotion, physically. <laughs> they will torment you. And the Lord will give them the authority to do so. Well, why would a good God do that? Well, it, there's all kinds of things in the Bible that keeps the Lord from being able to protect you. Because why? The Lord, just really short, is a just God. Which means he cannot go back on anything he's ever said. His word is bond. If the Lord ever went back on anything he's ever written in his word, the entire universe would fall apart. His word hinges everything, every molecule, every atom, everything hinges on his word. When he speaks, that's it. It's final. Just like the Lord said, the Lord in a Matthew 18, I wrote this down. I just, it came to my remembrance when I wrote this. So, um, not for, uh, I've been forgiven. Did, oh, did I forget? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, remember that in the story where the parable about the master, there was a, a servant that came up to the master and he had forgiven him of a bunch of debt, right? And and it was like a lot of money. And the servant was like, oh, gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you for forgiving my debt because he was going to be severely punished for it because he didn't have the money. They were going to take his wife, take his kids. And the master was like, oh, I forgive you of your debt. Just go do the same. Well, what did that servant do? The servant went back, had a servant of his own, beat and whipped and threw that servant in jail because that same servant that was under him had debt that he couldn't pay. So when the master found out about what that servant had done to his servant because the master had forgiven the first servant's death, he said, no, 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 wait a second. I forgave you of your debt, which was 10 times more what this man owed you, and I set you free. Not happening. Now you go to be tormented where there's gnashing of teeth. The Lord says when we break kingdom laws, there ain't nothing he can do about it. If you're in unforgiveness in this situation, that servant did not forgive the other servant's debt. This is just one example. There's many. While demons can harass us and it's allowed. This is just one example. Unforgiveness is a big one. The Lord says, if you're going to be staying in unforgiveness because I have forgiven you, these things get to follow you around and I cannot protect you. It's law. It's a kingdom law. Just like if I go run a red light out there and I kill somebody, it's the law. It doesn't matter if I'm sorry. It don't, I go to jail for manslaughter. It's an accident, but someone's got to pay for someone's loved one that died. Yes, it's the law. <coughs> kingdom laws are final. Number four, they compel us to do things. They make us do things we don't want to do. And it could be simple things like little habits, like nail biting. <laughs> um, nail biting, cussing, ticks or quirks. Weird things. That's not you. That's demonic. That's a spirit. You need to be delivered. They're just trying to torment you. Because if you can look weird and start doing weird things around people, people think you're weird, then you get a complex about yourself and... You know, it just goes downhill from there. They like to defile us, make us feel dirty, unclean. Images of unclean things will pop into our mind, knowing it's not us. Just weird, random, perverted thoughts. You're like, where did, what? I'm so embarrassed. Where did that come from? It's a devil projecting images in your mind. You're not a bad person. The devil is after you all the time. No, it's from him. We're slaves. He, they love, they, they love to, to cause us to be slaves to something. Addictions are one of them. Addi a when they compel and enslave you, it equals an addiction. So when you start doing something over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, you cannot stop it. All right? And they compel you to do things that cause you to just be a slave to it. They got you. It's an addiction. They deceive. All religious deceptions are demonic. Every one of them. Cults, demonic doctrines, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Muslims, Buddhist. All came from the demonic. And the funny thing is, it's because they're copycats. They all have 
little bits and pieces of the Bible attached to them. Spinning it and perverting it in some weird way. Right before I came here, I, I somehow I saw a little clip about the FDLS church, Mormonism, something about, what was his name? Jeff Warren. He's, he's in prison now. But he's still running this ring of, of Mormon fundamentalists, I think is what they called him. And that devil took the Bible and perverted it so severely that he took what the Lord had said about authority, about submission, about children being gods, uh, children being gods, not gods, but of God, so they belong to God. He took those things in the word and he twisted them so much that he defiled the word of God, but it sounded like God. Remember how I said deception is deception even if it's 10% false. You got to throw the whole thing out. Truth is 100% true. People like that go in and say, oh, see, authority, you've got to submit to me. Every single child belongs to the church because the Bible says that Hannah gave, gave Samuel to the, to the priest. So that right there tells you that all children belong to God. They don't belong to moms and dads. They belong to the church. So if you leave the church, I'm going to keep your kids. That's the kind of stuff that they do. That's what was happening in Utah before they locked him up. Demons twist things so that you don't have an identity. You don't have a right. You don't have a freedom. You don't have a choice. The thing about the Lord died, he died for every one of us to have free will. And another really cool thing that... Pastor Howard Pittman saw when he when he passed away and the Lord let him see how these kingdoms work. He saw angels attached to each person as well alongside the guardian angel now. This is separate from the guardian angel that you that we have to watch over us. These specific angels, their only job, I thought this was the Lord is brilliant. The only job this angel has is to make sure that your free will is not tampered with. Which means there's no devil in hell that can make you serve them. There's no angel or devil in hell or even G that can make you serve him. Like, he gives you free will and he's serious about it. Because in a court of law, nobody can say, this devil made me do it. No, 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 no. You had free will this whole time. I had signed a super natural angelic being of everyone to make sure that your free will was not tampered with. Everyone that goes into the kingdom of God had a free choice to serve me, and they chose me. Cults take away free will. Demons take away your free will by thinking you don't have a choice. I can't stop. I'm addicted. Lie. I can't stop doing this or that. I did this to that person because they made me. Lie. Everyone has free will. I can't stop thinking these thoughts. I can't stop being depressed. It's, it's in my DNA. I was born this way. Lie. It's not true. You get free will. I was born this, home, this way, a homosexual. I can't stop looking at porn. I just have a lust problem. My dad had a lust problem. Lie. Free will. That ain't going to fly when you meet the creator. They've also... Make us weak, sick, and tired. Spirit of slumber. How many of you understand? We talked about this. You can watch a movie to one, two in the morning that like you don't even like. Not even tired. The minute you crack open that Bible. <sighs> I'm so sleepy. I can't even open my eyes. It's a devil. But these little things you have to pay attention to. This isn't by happenstance. It's not, oh, that's weird. Like, I totally was, like, running laps around my house. And, like, I'm not even tired. And then the minute I crack up in the Bible, I could sleep for days. No, that's the spirit. Wake up. Start being wiser. Understand that there's an attack on every single one of us. And we have to be wise in the spirit as Christians, mature to get this so that we can soar, so we can be the head and not the tail. Now, listen. Very interesting about this as well. Demons 
they they like to influence, you know, they'll they'll break out the big guns sometimes and give us, you know, things that really cripple us that they can't take us down with the little things. But mostly they like to uh, inflict us in our emotions and attitudes, which is why everyone deals so bad with anxiety, depression, insecurities, fear, you know, those things that weigh heavy on the mind that keep us all so disoriented and distracted. I mean, because it works. I mean, why fix, you know, something that's working? But they also like to run in packs and gangs. So let me tell you how this ends up working. So these devils, they all are experts at something, which is why they're assigned to different problems. You know, just like in the angelic realm, you got Gabriel, Michael, you got archangels, cherubs, you got seraphims. They all are experts in something. The Lord created them experts in something. So remember we talked about, well, why does the Lord still give de demons gifts? And why are they still powerful? Because the Lord is good. And the Bible says that the gifts come without repentance. Just because they're disconnected from God doesn't mean that they grow weaker. It doesn't mean they don't have power. They absolutely do. It's just that they're demonically charged for eternity. I asked the Lord one time, I was like, Lord, why does like everyone paint demons as like these decrepit lizard looking things? Like, is that true? It is true. I saw a vision of it. What happened is, is the moment that Lucifer fell and everything went with him, the moment the Lord showed me and he said, honey, daughter, the moment that they clipped themselves from the life source is the second they begin to decay. Anything disconnected from God decays forever, which is why you and I decay until we hit the grave because when Adam sinned, he cut that and the Lord was like, oh my gosh, I have to go rescue them. They're going to be disconnected forever from me, decaying for eternity. So these demons are decaying and they've been decaying since the beginning of time. And that is so why they look so ugly, decrepit. They are literally falling apart and there's nothing that they can do about it. Nothing. Nothing. They are disconnected from the life source. They've been cut off from the vine forever. And they hate you because you're not. You have the life source literally living inside of you. They operate in packs and gangs. So pride, rebellion, the witchcraft and the occult, fear and rejection typically run together in this pact, these spirits. Resentment, unforgiveness, anger, hatred, violence, and eventually murder, those run together as a pack. You start feeling resentment, then you get into unforgiveness, then you start getting into anger, now you start to hate, then you start to act out on that hate, and oops, Cain killed Abel. Murder. These spirits run in a pack. Disappointment, loneliness, misery, depression, self-destruction, suicide runs in a pack. This is how it flows down. You're disappointed. Something happened to you in your life that caused disappointment in your life. Then you start getting lonely about it. Divorce. Someone left you. There was a death. Something happened. Now you're miserable. Now you're depressed because you're miserable. There's no joy. Now there's self-destruction. Now you're drinking. Now you've taken care of this, this vessel and you're putting all kind of garbage in it. This is supposed to be a temple and now you're destroying everything that the Lord created because you just self-hate yourself. Then what's next? There's nowhere to go but suicide. Devils did their job. It's a tear. Another pack, mind spirits, unbelief. Doubt, compromise, forgetfulness, confusion, torment, then insanity. See how that goes? You get into unbelief. There's no God. All is well. Love is love. That miracle, ah, it was just a happenstance. Doubt, you start to compromise. You start to forgetfulness. You forget who even who you are, what you're here, what's your purpose. You're confused. I don't even know what's right. I don't know what's up, what's down, all around. You're, you're just in this constant whirlwind now because you've got no protection. You've got no existence. You don't even know where you came from. You, you're just a, a lump of cells that are just breathing. 
You start getting tormented. Now you hear voices. Now you're getting schizophrenic. Now you, you believe you're paranoid. You believe everyone's after you. Oh, now you're insane. You need to go to a mental institution. You can't be in public. Devil won. Devil's completed the assignment. Spirits of the tongue, lying, cursing, blasphemy, gossip, criticism, they run in a pack. Then you got your sexual demons. They run in a pack. You got fornication, adultery, which is sometimes, most all the time, if you break it down, family spirits, familiar spirits. Like the dad was an adulterer while the baby was in the womb. And that spirit then got attached to the innocence in the womb. And now that baby is now an adulterer too. Masturbation, homosexuality, prostitution, pornography, sexual fantasies and fetishes. They're all grouped. It's a demonic gang. I'm telling you, these demons, there's millions upon millions of them. And they all have specific expertise in whatever assignment is on each person. Why? Because these familiar spirits have watched your family. So these assignments are specifically tailored and crafted to each family. These demons know what gang member or what strategy belongs to you. It's different than it is for you, than it is for me. Here's another, here's another group of gang spirits that run in a pack. The lust and the addictions. Addiction is just a lust. A lust for something, an idol, that destroys the vessel. Nicotine, alcohol, gluttony, drugs, strange addictions. You know those that TV show about the strange addictions? People like to eat toilet paper and go outside and eat grass. And, right? Like you're like, really, that's like a devil. Come on. You really need deliverance. Are you seriously, you think it's normal for you to be eating toilet paper? No. You got a demon. Come here and get some deliverance, child, please. Don't put that on TV. That's defiling you. Don't do that. Sugar, Cokes, you know, just weird things. Then you got the devils of, you know, spirituality, new age. I love talking to Jack about this because he's like, what do you call it? Matcha? What? Matcha. What do they call it? The new chakras. age. Chakras. Chakras. Yeah. Or something. Real. Yeah, about something chakras. Oh, yeah. And it's like, what? Well, open one up and then go mentally insane a week later. That's right. Yeah. Oh, speaking of that, you just, oh my gosh. Jack, you just remind me something. Yes, thank you. I saw this documentary about this kid. He's not saved, so, oh, it broke my heart. But he knew something had happened to him. He had done that. He had opened something with some paraphernalia, yes. some drugs, mushrooms. Uh -huh. And he had done it for like three or four days straight, and he started recording his behavior. I've seen that. Oh, man. And it was demons talking through him in the most cryptic, insane some were british some were australian some were american these things would it was some one would come through one would retreat and another one would come through one would retreat and another one would come through what and they would called? they would hackle and laugh i'll have to yeah, find it and send it. it it was and the man telling the testimony was saying i have never been more spiritually enlightened in all my life i don't know what happened to me and I was terrified, but now I feel free. And I was thinking to myself, they're going to kill you. Oh my gosh, you just let all of these demonic demons in you. And they're talking through you, having the best time of their life, and you have no idea. Oh, they get in this way. And so the New Age is a very, very demonic portal to hell all kind of ways there's all kind of ways to the supernatural i'm just gonna be honest with you guys on, online go ahead start yes you can get into the supernatural that way go to a medium open your third eye yeah you're gonna see some things you're gonna experience some things you're gonna have some really wacky gnarly encounters i'm gonna tell you this you're playing with fire there is only one way into the supernatural one way that's legal and that is through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. If you go in any other way, you have just opened Pandora's box in your life. 
You may not feel it immediately, but they will come after your jugular because the devil always comes to collect his pound of flesh. I want you to know this. He always does. You're not going to get away with that encounter if it wasn't through Jesus. One correct way. And the thing is, is that the psychics, they'll tell you the truth to hook you. These demonic spirits on these psychics, these mediums who don't realize that they're working for decrepit demons that look like tales from the crypt, like decaying lizards. They don't, if, the, if the Lord would open these mediums' eyes, they would say that's who's, who's sitting next to them. They don't know. They think they're super enlightened and spiritual. But what happens is, is that those devils, they do, they'll, they'll, they'll tell the truth to that person telling you what you want to hear. Just to hook you. Just to hook you. They'll give you just enough to make you think that it's something supernatural. And once you're hooked, that medium or that devil that's talking through that medium or that medium realizes she's doing it or not will curse you. And you think it's a prophecy. And you'll get in your car and you'll hit a tree. Because they want to kill you. May not happen the first session. May happen the second or third. No. It'll happen. Clearly demonic sicknesses are things like epilepsy. If there's no proof that there's a tumor and someone's just epileptic, you got, you got a demon. There's a spirit in there messing with you. I mean, but we have to use discernment. Not everything is a demon. Not everything. But 98% of these things are, and we have to use discernment, stress, um, migraines. And most allergies are torment. Not all, but most are. They're, they just torment you. Constant itching of the eyes and, and the nose and the sniffles and the, oh, yep. it's just, it's torment. It's torment. It's, those are things that like, don't go away, right? Like you can identify a virus. It's just the world we're living in. They're everywhere. It's a fallen world. Okay. It comes and it goes. But like allergies, things like that, think of tormenting things, things that constantly just torment you to death and they just won't go away, right? Unless you take some kind of prescription pill. These are typically spiritual issues. Uh, crippling or the contortion of the body, like bowing in, things like that when you're elderly or just happening. If you can't sleep, things like that. Insomnia, those are tormenting spirits, all right? They're there to torment you to death. Um, spirits of, there's actual spirits of death. You ever seen some families that are just dealing with just weird, just, I, I don't know, like people in their family just, just won't stop dying? Like, you're like, what? Another death in your family? What? What's happening? I need you to come to church. We need to talk about this. Right? Like, that's what you want to say to them, but they're in so much grief. It's like, there's something going on. Arthritis, the twisting of the joints. Okay. I, I have a lot, and I don't think I can get through it tonight. Oh, we're going to have to continue, continue this next week. I wanted to get in some New Year's things, but that's okay. I want to get through this. Um, let me just finish with this, and, and then we'll, we'll move on on how to get rid of them next week. I'm 100% sure nobody in here needs deliverance, okay? That's why I'm going to skip on how to get rid of them. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do that online next week, guys. Um, I'm just testing the waters. I know, I know the people I'm around, so I can sense in the spirit. But let me just tell you how they get in, okay? How do they get in? There's multiple ways. They get in through occult backgrounds. Even if you're not messing with the occult, right? Maybe you've had a family, family member that messed with the occult down to the second or third generation. The occult and this, these kind of things God takes really, really seriously. It goes back to the Old Testament. Let me read you in Exodus 20, um, 1 through 6. He says, um, God will punish the children for the sins of the parents of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but display grace to the thousands of generations to those who love and obey my laws. He also says here that anything with the occult, anything with um, sacrificing to different gods, anything that has to do with passing the babies through the fire, which is witchcraft, any of those things up to the uh, third and fourth generation. So you, you could be dealing with a familiar spirit because of something that your grandmother, grandmother, someone in your family. How about um, uh, the, the Masons, Masonry, stuff like that? 
okay? That stuff is very serious, and it does follow the family. You don't have to be afraid. You can easily get rid of it by denouncing it, repenting for your family, okay? Standing in the gap for them, right? Standing in proxy for them and said, Lord, please forgive the sins of my ancestors. Please forgive the sins of my grandparents, whoever it was. Lord, I don't want no part of that. Break the tie. Cut the string. You're my Lord and Savior. Get this off of me. I come out of agreement with this family demonic curse, Okay. They also get in by personal occult involvement, new age, spiritual practices, Wiccan. They get in by parental influences. People don't know that unborn babies are very sensitive to the outside words of people. We see this in John, um, in, I think it's Matthew and Luke. Um, John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb jumps for joy when Mary tells her about her pregnancy of the Messiah. Very sensitive spirit in that situation, okay? Um, things like moms or dads saying or maybe fighting and there's a baby in the womb. I never wanted that kid and, you know, that's not my kid. Or there's alcoholism and a mom's like, I hate you. Why am I pregnant? This stuff affects a child and you don't realize it. And maybe you're that child until you grow up and you have these things attached to your life and you're wondering, why does my life, what happened? Sometimes there's things that we let in and there's sometimes things that we just didn't, it's not even our fault. And you say, that's not fair. Well, it's not fair because we live in a fallen world. I mean, we live in this world that the Lord had to come rescue us from. So no, we're, we're literally in war constantly. And if you don't learn how to be a soldier, you're going to be a casualty of war. This is what we learned last week, right? You, you either are enlisted immediately when Jesus becomes your Lord and Savior, or if you don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, you are eventually going to be a casualty of war. It's just a matter of time. Because you're in a war. You just got to pick a side. Yelling, screaming, abuse, and neglect of a child. You know, they get in through the womb that way. That's why you see some children that... that are sometimes a little bit demonized. It's, yes, it can happen. I hate calling children. It can happen. <laughs> because of the things they've been around, some of these children have been in occult a, a ceremonies. I could cry thinking about it. Traffic it, you know? They got some things attached to them, these, these sweet babies that they, did, they had nothing to do with. And they grow up, and what ends up happening? They, some of them, addicts, kill themselves, overdose. Soulish um, domination from others. Sometimes we see this with, with people who have strong domination over other people. Maybe there's a child that was never able to break through, break from a mom or dad. Like they're just very still dominant over them. Like maybe a mom and son where a mom won't let them go. Or maybe there's like a dominance going on with, with like a friendship. I mean, dominance has a lot to do with letting things in as well it's, it's strange we can start breaking all of these down and start getting into areas where demons attach themselves through different circumstances like this early childhood pressures moments of weakness which is demonic favorites they love to get in during moments of weakness in people the devil always chooses the weakest moments in your life to, and he'll use it sinful acts and habits consistent sin consistent sin like, you know that it's sin, and you keep going, and you keep doing it. You get not one, not two, but legions of devils. I'm just telling you. Keep up. No self-control. Proverbs 2, 25, 28. I love this. Remember this. Proverbs 25, 28. Like a city breached without city walls, so is a person who lacks self-control. Habitual sin, no self-control, you've got no walls, you've got no protection. Those demons love you. And they sound just like that. I'm going to have to send you that. It's wild. Oh, the, the guy? Yeah. I was going to play it tonight, but I was like, no, my kids are here. I'm not doing it. And we got little... <laughs> She's all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, no. She can no. ask a few questions later. We'll figure it out. I mean, it was the wildest Mad Hatter. Yeah. That's all I can think about. Like, it just, and the things they were saying. It's, they get, like, relief and then mental breakdown. Me yeah. Mental breakdown. That's what it was. Yeah. Yes, this is. Yeah. It would be, 
cackling and laughing and oh, just emotional breakdown and I love you, I hate you. Just weird, right? Because they're insane. Well, so he was trying to like open a chakra. I oh, know you're like online. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. But he was trying to like open. What was he doing? He was Taking opening. shrooms. Oh, okay. Trying to be super spiritual. Yeah. Because he heard from somebody that this is how you find your inner. What he found was a legion of demons. Yeah. That's why I did it, though, because I didn't watch the whole thing. Yeah. Once I heard those voices, I'm like, all right, I'll start praying. That's why he did it. That's <laughs> why he did it. And he recorded himself. Well, he started recording himself, I think, the second night because he realized these, this was happening so he to him. stayed up that long? For, like, hours. These things kept talking for four hours through him. And That's it's on so recorder. weird. Very weird. And, well, very demonic. And it just goes to show this is very, very real. Yeah. It's very real. It's 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 real. It, like I always say, and I hope eventually if I say enough, people will get it. The realm that we cannot see is more real yeah. than the realm we can see. And it governs this realm. And it governs this realm. Yeah. And if people could get that through their head, we're in the fake. Uh -huh. They're in the real. The guy that posted that video, by the way, he is an unbeliever, but he said, look, I want to post this to let people know that this is out there. This is real. Yeah. And then you know, I don't believe in God. This is a real thing. So yeah. if people don't believe in that, then, you know. And I hate that because that means nobody got to him to tell him what he was, what that was. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew that it was something supernatural and something had gotten a hold of him that was dark and scary. But even then was not scary enough. He didn't know what it was, so he kept playing with it. He kept playing with it. Well, and the thing is, the demons knew. They didn't scare him enough to make him run to church. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they should have done that. Yeah. They scared him enough to want more. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do. They're enchanters. They're brilliant. And they make it feel good while they do it. They That's make it. Sad. They make it enlightening. Mm -hmm. That's where the chakras are. You like, for some reason, you get this like weird temporary relief, and then it just is like an open door. Though you're just opening yourself up to the world, <sighs> the prince of this world. And it is done like, like a like the frog in the warm bath. Like it, it doesn't boil you yet. You just keep playing with it, and you keep going. Checkmate. Yeah, then schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, insanity, death, suicide. All of those things. Or you murder someone. You don't even remember you did it. I've heard of those stories before. So I'm going to end there tonight. Um, there's so much more. We'll break down the rest of this probably next week before the new year. Because I really want everyone to really get this. I don't. I hate it when people are tortured. I hate it when people are tortured. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Because you're in a prison that you feel like you can't get out of. But what people don't understand is you can you can. It is a false imprisonment. It's not real imprisonment. And you don't know what you're dealing with because you don't know what you don't know, so you deal with it. I hate it. So, I feel... How many do I have online? I just want to make sure that everyone gets delivered tonight who needs to be delivered. So, we're just going to do this real quick. Okay. All right. If we can... Knox, go ahead and transition the music. And we're just going to do this. And you guys do the same thing if you even think there's anything on you at all. Anything at all. I'm just going to lead you into some deliverance. And it's okay. Christians need deliverance too. They can't possess you on the inside, but they can harass you on the outside. No, not that one. Let's just do the, the regular one. Yeah. Just to get the um, the frequency better. I don't want, I want all these demons. I just want, you're going to go. You're going to go tonight. I believe they're everywhere. All right. The number one way to get rid of a demon, there's, we're going to go through some steps. Go ahead and turn that down just a little bit, honey. Online, these are the steps, okay? You need to be real with yourself. Number one. Yeah, turn it down a tad more. Not anymore. Okay, that'll, that'll be okay. That'll be okay. That'll be okay. All right. For number one, you need to, you need to be humble. Being humble is understanding there's something going on with me. I don't like it. I understand it's not me. I'm not, I don't have too much pride to believe that, you know, it's, you know, oh, it's, it's just me and I can fix this with pills or whatever. Humble yourself. You have to humble yourself and say, I can't do this anymore. There's something wrong with me and I don't want it anymore. Number two, be honest. You be honest about what it is. Is it depression? Is it anxiety? Is it insomnia? What is the torment? Identify it now. And it could be many things. 
identify it. Number three, this ain't coming off unless you confess your life to Christ. It'll come off for a season because he's good. And he'll deliver you whether you're saved or not. But it's only a matter of time before that thing brings back seven other things more evil than itself to inhabit you. Let's make sure that this never comes back. Never comes back. Say, Lord Jesus, you are my everything. You are King of kings and Lord of all lords. I believe, I believe you, Lord, that you died for my sins. You shed your blood on Calvary. You died, you resurrected, and you're coming again. I believe that you're the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. Save me, and he'll save you. Number four, confess all your knowing sins, all the things that you know. Confess it and begin repenting. Confess, right now, confess. I confess this is what I'm doing. I'm sleeping with my girlfriend or boyfriend and I'm not married. I'm smoking pot. I'm smoking cigarettes. I'm cussing. Start confessing these things. Confess them. I'm angry. I'm slanderous. I'm drinking. Confess. Repent. Repent means turn from and don't go back. Go the other way. You tell the Lord, I've confessed these things and I repent. I am done. Lord, forgive me. I am done. I repent. Break those ties the devils have on you. They have a legal, uh, they have a legal authority to be on you when you're doing these things. It's a legal, a contract. Break it. You're going to repent. Break all contracts or anything you have in your life, in your home, with the occult. Get it out of your house. If you've got Buddha statues, if you've got crystals, crystals aren't bad. It's the worship of them, okay? So if you've got crystals in your house that you've worshipped, you got to get them out, okay? It doesn't mean you can't ever have stones and stuff. I love stones. I love jewelry. Crystals are beautiful. God made them. But we don't worship them. We don't do anything weird with them. They don't change energies. They don't open portals. They don't do any of those things. Throw it away. Burn all of your witchcraft books. Throw them away. Take your Buddha off the wall, off the shelf. Whatever you have that's given you some ambiance that's of a different cultic religion, throw it away. Clear it out. Forgive. You've got all of this cleansed. You've repented. You've confessed. You know the Lord is your Savior. You've been humble. You've been honest. you got to forgive. Who hurts you? Forgive them. Lord, you don't know what they've done to me. I, I can imagine. I've had a lot of things done to me. My husband's had a lot of things done to him. Horrible things. Inappropriate things. But you got to forgive because it's not for them. It's for you. And these things have a legal right to be on you when you don't forgive because you didn't deserve forgiveness and God forgave you. Forgive. Just be done with it and mean it. And then you stand on scripture daily. I'm going to rebuke these things off of you. After this, I want you to go back through this video and I want you to go through these lists that I just said over and over until you've checked off every box. Okay? Because you're going to get delivered. But we want to make sure these things stay off. It's a daily bath. It's a daily bath for me. Just because I preach the gospel does not mean I'm not harassed. I am. And some days are worse than others because maybe my guard's a little bit down. I didn't read the word like I should have that morning in my routine because something I had to do something with the cat or the dog or kids need something. Someone threw up. I don't know. My routine's off. But I know that if I do, the voices are much quieter and I can ignore them. And if you don't, they're going to come back on you like a vengeance. The last step before we deliver you online, you read this word and you pick the scriptures in here that edify and solidify who you are in Christ and your authority 
and your rights. You have rights because you're a citizen of the kingdom of God. You have rights. Just like as a U.S. citizen, you have rights. You have rights when you go overseas. You, they can't touch you. Well, on a specific person's office. We won't go in that. Um, Joel 2.32. Stand on it. Write it down. Joel 2.32. Stand on this scripture. Luke 10, 19, stand on it. 1 John 3, 8, stand on it. I want you to go look these up because if I spoon feed them to you, they don't mean anything. When you search these things out, they stick in your head. Read it every day. The Bible every day, but stand on these scriptures daily. They are your shield. Colossians 1, 13. You have to know who you are in Christ. All right, so if you're ready, and you've done all of those things, you're ready to be delivered. In the name of Jesus, I command every tormenting spirit to loose every person under the sound of my voice now. You tormenting spirits, you will loose them. You have no authority or ties to them anymore. Every lying tongue, go. Every lying whisper, go. Every demonic anxiety, depression spirit, go in Jesus' name. Every tormenting spirit of the skin, you will leave. Every tormenting spirit of the mind, you will leave. Every single spirit that is causing a spirit of suicide, all of you gang members are evicted now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of addiction, alcohol, pot, any drug, any pharmaceutical, out now in Jesus' name. The spirit of religion, loose your grip off of children of God now in Jesus' name. Every person that was involved in an occult, any Jehovah Witness, Mormon, any child that grew up in that, I release you the lying dogs now out of your ear. The curse off of your life now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Spirit of rejection, I see you. You spirit of rejection, you let go now in Jesus' name. They are no orphan. They belong to the Most High. Loose them now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I declare peace, joy. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you put your hands up to the screen. Let's do it right now. All of those who are willing and hungry and you've been knocking, the Lord is filling you now with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit right now where you are. Peace, warm fire. Some of you are beginning to speak in tongues. Just let it roll out. Let it roll out. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy. Some of you are crying, tears streaming down your face. You're being healed. The Lord is healing you. Receive. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, is it in me? Anything you want to say to anybody here or online? Anything at all, Lord, I'm your open vessel. bullying you at school? Is there anybody being mean to you? Nothing you can think about? That's good. 
Well, let me pray over you, okay? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sweet child of God. Father, thank you for making her days easy and peaceful. And all ugly tongues that have ever come to your precious daughter, you are shutting the mouth now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing her to know your love for her, your acceptance and your joy. Thank you, Jesus, that she will be a mighty woman of God. Thank you, Jesus, after you, full-hearted for the rest of her life. Spearheading a generation after you, Jesus. The Lord has given you a lion heart, sweetheart, that's going to be brave and courageous, and you're going to be bold, and you're never going to be afraid. And you're going to shine the light to all of your friends. Thank you, Jesus, for putting your spark in this younger generation. Thank you, Lord, that they will shine brighter than all of us and do mighty miracles and wonders that will confound the wise. Thank you, Jesus, for the peace and safety over your people. Sean, let's pray for your ears. Come up here. Your ear. Is it still clogged? Is it still clogged? What's your Both. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus, for this healing. Be healed. Both ears, you will be healed now in Jesus' name. All, anything that's clogging, any inflammation, any pain in the ears, I command you to leave now under the sound of my voice given to me, the authority by Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this healing. Be healed. Thank you. How's it feel? Feel good? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let me just bless you guys. We'll go wrap it up. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you. May the Lord's face turn towards you and give you peace. Thank you, Jesus. Every single one of you have the authority to trample on demons. Do it and do it with authority. Love you guys. Bye. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So good.